And everybody said, Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. And we thank you for what you are going to do in every life. Lord, we bring everyone to the cross. And we're asking, oh Lord, the cross will cancel every negative thing in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, that to make us to be what you want us to be. And your power will work in every life. And the word will penetrate every life. And Lord, we pray every good thing we desire. And every good thing you have promised to give us. It will be ours this morning in Jesus' name. Bless your people abundantly. And help us, Lord, that this will be the continuation of the dawn of a new beginning. Do it in every life. Surprise everyone was a miracle. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I thought you can do better than that. Thank you very much. You can see that we're coming to James chapter 1. In James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God. That statement is true about wisdom. And it's true about every other thing in our lives. If any of you lack knowledge. If any of you lack power. If any of you lack healing. If any of you lack miracle. If any of you lack any good promised thing. If any of you lack. Let him ask of God. And that... Let him ask of God that give it to how many people now? All men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Thank God I'm receiving this morning. It shall be given him. It will be given to you in Jesus name. But as you think about that look at verse 26. If any, of you, if any among you seem to be religious and brightleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. It talks about faith, and it talks about the tongue. And it says, if any of us seem to be religious, I'm born again, I'm saved, I'm a child of God, I'm following the Bible, I'm going to heaven. If any of you seem to be religious, and does not control his tongue. And he says just anything and everything. It says this man's religion, this man's profession is vain. And then he tells us he deceives his own self. Look at chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 17. Even so, if it if is, if it had not words, is dead, being alone. This is faith clinic. And faith needs to come into direct action. Operation. Because faith without action. Faith without works. And faith without demonstration. Is um, empty. And it says it is dead. Being alone. Your faith will go along with your action. Your faith will go, on, will go along with your declaration. And your faith will go along with the demonstration of what you believe. Look at verse 20. It says, But will thou know, O man, that faith without works is dead? If you say, I believe, your life is going to match your faith. Your action is going to match your faith. Your utterance is going to match your faith. And your activities are going to match your faith. Look at verse 26. It says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. He wants our life to come alive. A faith to come alive. A confidence in God to come alive. And part of the way you show your faith is what you say with your mouth. Look at chapter 3. 
I'm looking at James chapter 3. I'm looking at it from verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindness. Then it says in verse 6, and the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and is set on fire the cause of nature. It is set on the fire of hell. And then it tells us in verse 10, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. You see, there are people, they'll talk faith one moment and talk unbelief the next moment. They'll talk about the problems, about the promises of God one moment and then talk about problems of life the next moment. They'll think about heaven and then talk about hell the next moment. They'll think of making progress and then going backward the very next moment. He says, this is ought not to be. If you talk faith, keep on talking faith. If you believe God, keep on believing God. And if you say, this is going to happen, my mountain is going to move, keep on saying that, it will move. I say, keep on saying that, it will move. And then we come to chapter 4. In chapter 4, I'm looking at verse 6. Chapter 4, looking at verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Thank God I'm having more this morning. Somebody there said, you're having more this morning. It says, he giveth more faith, wherefore he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. The Lord had assured us through the statement he made unto Paul the apostle. It says, my grace is sufficient for you. Anything you are going through this morning, grace available. Grace abundant. And grace sufficient. But remember that he resisteth the proud and he giveth grace to the humble. Verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. I said resist the devil. You, you know some people, they say, I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. The devil made me do it. The devil cannot make you to do anything if you resist the devil. If you say no to the devil, Satan will run away. If you say no to the works of the devil, the works of the devil, they're going to be nullified in your life in Jesus' name. Resist the devil. Tell me the rest of that verse. I cannot hear you. Talk with the voice of a preacher. And he will flee from you. Thank God, demons are going to flee from you. The devil is going to flee from you. And everything, every work of the devil is going to depart from you in Jesus' name. It will happen. I said it will happen. How will it happen? Because we're going to pray. I said today we're going to pray. If you're going to pray, where are you there? And the Lord is going to answer your prayer. Everything you say in prayer with that mouth that is cleansed by the blood of Jesus today. The Lord is going to answer in Jesus name. And look at verse 13. Verse 13 of uh, chapter 5. Chapter 5 verse 13. Is send here among you afflicted. Let him pray. Let him pray. Let him pray. And as you pray the Lord will answer that prayer. Look at verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. That ye may be healed. That ye may be healed. Anybody expecting healing there? And anybody knowing that that healing is going to come today? I said the healing is going to come today. You will not take sickness back home in Jesus name. Infirmity will not follow you back home. And all those things that you know working about the body running around in the body, they're not going to follow you back home in Jesus' name. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, he prayed again, he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Your life is going to bring forth. I said your life is going to bring forth. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Here I'm reading from verses 18 and 19. Isaiah chapter 43. I read from verse 18. It says, Remember ye not the former things. Medical report that says, uh, you know, this is serious. And you're going to die. No, you're not going to die. I said you're not going to die. And the results of whatever test you have done that say this is serious. This is going to continue for the rest of your life. No, it is not going to continue. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, behold, behold. I will do a new thing. A new thing is starting today in your life in Jesus' name. God says, I will. He says, I will. He says, I will. I will do a new thing. And then it goes on to say, now, when is my miracle? I say, when is your miracle? When is the turning around in your life? Praise the Lord, something will happen to you. You'll never forget. Now, it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? It's a question. Shall ye not know it? The Lord is asking you, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. You are coming out of that wilderness. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way. It's going to make a way in your wilderness. And you come through and you come out in Jesus' name. And rivers in the desert. And rivers in the desert. Not just uh, sprinkles of water, not just drops of rain. There will be rivers in the desert of your life in Jesus' name. We're coming now to this message and it's the wonder of the tongue. The wonder of the tongue. Already I've read the scriptures to you in James chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5 about the tongue and about the connection of faith with that tongue. When your tongue speaks the word of faith, the Lord is going to turn every situation in your life, is going to turn everything around in Jesus' name. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, the wonder of unfailing tongues of faith. The wonder of the unfailing tongues of faith tongues of faith tongues of confidence in god tongues of trust in god tongues proclaiming pronouncing demonstrating declaring the words of faith you will not fail that tongue will not fail and the situation in your life is going to be affected by that word of faith in jesus name the wonder of unfailing tongues of faith. Point number two. The wilderness created by unbridled tongues of faithlessness. The wilderness we create for ourselves. The problems we create for ourselves. Avoidable problem. Avoidable problem. And all those avoidable problems, they're going to be cleared away from your life, from your family today in Jesus' name. The wilderness created by unbridled tongues of faithlessness. Point number three, the weapon of unconquerable tongues on the field. On the field. Anywhere you find yourself on the field, on the field of battle, on the field of evangelism, on the field in the place of work, anywhere you find yourself from this morning, you are going to become unconquerable. I thought somebody would say good, good, amen. amen. Number one is the wonder. I said number one is the wonder. And that wonder will come upon your life today in Jesus' name. And how does this wonder come? 
It comes by the tongue of faith. Unfailing tongue of faith. Look at Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8. We're looking at verse 5. It tells us in Matthew chapter 8 and in verse 5. It says that when Jesus was entered into Capernaum. There came to him a centurion beseeching him. Pleading with him. Asking him. Demanding of him. Praying unto him. There came a centurion. And you are that centurion this morning. As you are asking. An answer is coming already. As you are asking. There's going to be a change. In your circumstances already. It says. Uh, and saying Lord. My servant lies at home. Seek of the palsy. Grievously tormented. He wasn't even asking for himself. He was asking for the servant. And he said, my servant is grievously tormented. Tormented by the devil. And every torment will come to an end this morning in your life. It will come to an end in the life of your wife. In the life of your husband, in the life of that boy, in the life of that child, the Lord is going to do a miracle in the life of that child today in Jesus' name. But you know, the centurion demanded, beseeched the Lord, and he said, this is what I want. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. He never says no. He never says no. Anybody needs a miracle, he never says no. Anybody needs a transformation, he never says no. Anybody needs salvation, he never says no. Anybody needs deliverance, he never says no. Anybody is making a request of the Lord this morning, he never says no. He will not say no unto you. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. The word is mighty. The word is powerful. Speak the word only. And that word coming to you now is the word of Jesus Christ. It's the word of power. The word that is backed up by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The day has come. The time has come. That the word of the Lord will take effect in your life today in Jesus name. And, and, and the man gave a receipt for what he said. Look at verse 9. For I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this man go. And he goeth. And to another come. And he cometh. And to my servant do this. And he doeth it. You know what he was saying? He was saying I'm a centurion. I have 100 soldiers under me. Some of them are short, some of them are tall, some of them are big, some of them are very strong, some of them are very, are very well trained, and they can do almost anything. But as powerful as some of them are, as great as some of them are, as long standing in the army as some of them are, I have control, I have authority over them. I say to this one, doesn't matter his name. I say to this one, doesn't matter his touch up. I say to this one, doesn't matter his long years of experience. I say, go. What happens? I said, what happens? He go ahead. And I say, come. And he comes. And I do say, do this. And he does it. What he was saying is, I'm a centurion. Over soldiers. You are a captain. Over sickness. Over disease, over demons, over paths of darkness. Like I have authority over soldiers, you have authority over sickness. And if you say to this sickness, go, what will happen? It will go. And it doesn't matter the name of that sickness is going this morning. It doesn't matter how long that sickness has been there. It's going this morning doesn't matter what reports have been said about that sickness the word of Jesus will cast everything out today in Jesus name and when Jesus said it in verse 10 he marveled and he said unto them that followed verily I say unto you I have not found 
so great faith no not in israel verse 13 and jesus says unto the centurion go thy way as thou hast believed so be each unto me somebody is believing god this morning i said somebody there is believing god this morning and as you have believed so it will be done in jesus name and his servant was healed in the self same hour and the servant was healed tell me out aloud in the cell same hour this is your hour i said this is your hour and that hour is coming upon you today in jesus name that servant was healed and thank god you are going to be healed we're looking at uh, matthew chapter 15. in matthew chapter 15 i'm looking at it from verse 21. matthew chapter 15 we're looking at verse 21. and they said that was a man and now we're coming to a woman whether you're a man or a woman something is going to penetrate your life from heaven this morning in jesus name the power of the Lord and the power of the word that drives every infirmity away, your man is coming to you. Your woman is coming to you. Your boy is coming to you. Your girl is coming to you. The power of the Lord is going to work mightily in every life today in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went this. And departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Look up here for a moment. You know, the centurion had a similar problem. And now this woman is having the same problem. A problem with evil spirit, a problem with evil power, a problem that this woman had with his with her own daughter, the centurion had with her servant, and she came to Jesus. They all came to Jesus and they were answered. And as you come to Jesus this morning, praise the Lord, the answer is on the way. And talking to somebody there over there, I said, Your answer is on the way. And as we begin to pray, I mention the name of Jesus. And you hear that? Amen. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on earth, it's going to be done from heaven in Jesus' name. Look at verse 23. And he answered her not a word. And that is not a year in delay that took one, one month or took uh, one week or even took one day. Just a short moment. And it says, he answered her, not a word. And then he goes on to say, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cries after us. But she answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Short prayer, Lord, help me. Just a prayer with three words. Lord, help me. You see, there are some people, they think we have to pray and pray and pray. And multiply words and look for big, big words before we can be answered. This morning, your prayer, simple prayer, God will answer. Your prayer, short prayer, God will answer. Your prayer, straightforward prayer, God will answer. Look at the words there, very simple. Lord, everybody understands that. You're my Lord from now on. You're my master from now on. You're the captain of my salvation from now on. And I submit and surrender myself unto you totally, implicitly, completely, entirely. I make you Lord of my life. Help me. Help. Help. I cannot do this for myself. Help. I cannot drive out the devil by myself. Help. I cannot overcome this by myself. Help. Help is coming. I said, help is coming. And then she said, help me. They said, I'm asking for myself. I want this for my family. I want this for my daughter. I want this to relieve me. Help me. Lord, 
help me. Look at the answer in verse 26. But he answered and said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not suitable, not fit to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Lord, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. There's a woman like that there here this morning. Where is she there? Great is your faith. There's a man like that here this morning. Where are you there? Great is your faith. What's, what's great faith? The faith that will not give up. The faith that will not turn around. The faith that says, Lord, help me. I'm going to get help. I'm going to receive help. And then when an, an, a negative answer appears to come, we have said the final amen, and you have not seen a change, you say, I'm going to see a change. I'm going to receive my miracle. I'm going to receive my healing. It must come. It must come. And she didn't have to repeat, Lord, help me again. Many, many times. Just that was that she said, help me. The help came. This morning, as you rise and you tell the Lord, help me, heal me, save me, sanctify me, deliver me, and set me free, it will happen this morning in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, it will happen. It's happening already. You feel it in your soul. You know it in your body. You sense it around you there. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Thank God it's happening. I said, thank God it's happening. We're looking at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 22. Mark chapter 11. And we're looking at verse 22. It says, Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. The Lord was telling them, Whatever the problem, here is the answer. Have faith in God. However long the problem has been, here is the answer. Have faith in God. Whatever the pressure and whatever the attack and whatever the pain, here is the answer. Have faith in God. Whatever you might have been telling yourself, whatever other people might have been telling you, how strong the problem is, how great the problem is, how mighty the problem is, here is the answer. Have faith in God. And he's talking to you. I said, and he's talking to you. I said, and he's talking to you. And then he backed that up in verse 23. He says, because for verily I say unto you, assuredly I say unto you, without any shadow of doubt, I say unto you, that whosoever, whosoever, any whosoever there this morning, I said, any whosoever there this morning, the Lord has given us uh, assurance that there's no partiality with God. There's no discrimination with God. And there's no respect of persons with God. It says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart or shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, he shall have, he shall have, whatsoever he says it is coming this morning whatsoever i said whatsoever it will come upon your life in jesus name uh, see what the lord is saying at the conclusion in verse 24 therefore i say unto you therefore i say unto you who is he talking to here this morning now he's talking to you what things soever you desire when you pray, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, whatsoever things you desire, any desire your heart, spiritual blessing, any desire your heart, physical blessing, any desire your heart, domestic in, in the family, any desire in the profession, any desire, the prayer you are making, the request you are making before God, and it says, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe, that she received them. What's the conclusion? 
I said, what's the conclusion? I said, what's the conclusion? And ye shall have them. 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 I will have them. I said, I will have them. I said, I will have them. I said, I will have them. Satan will, will clear out of your way. Demons will clear out of your way. Any blockage, any barrier will clear out of your way. I will have them. Look at the response of Paul the Apostle. I'm looking at Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. And I'm reading from verse 25. Acts chapter 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me, because heaven never tells a lie. An answer came from heaven. A declaration came from heaven. And because heaven never tells a lie, I believe God, it shall be, even as it was told me, it came from the heart of God. Throw that angel to Paul the apostle. And he said, this statement came from heaven. That I will, I will receive whatever I'm asking. And I believe God. It shall be. Even as it was told me. Look at what Jesus has said. Jesus our Lord. And Jesus the captain of our salvation. And he never, he never tells a lie. And I believe. And I believe. I believe it shall be. Even as it was told me. It will happen. I said it will happen. And this at the time is going to happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. But let your tongue be the tongue of faith. Let your language be the language of faith. And let your declaration be the declaration of faith. And something miraculous is happening to you already. Your confession will come to realization in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. How many things are possible in your life? I said how many things are possible today in your family? I said in your family, in your place of work, in your profession, in your spiritual life, all things are possible to him that believeth the wonder of the unfailing tongue of faith. Point number two now, the wilderness created by unbridled tongues of faithlessness. The wilderness created by unbridled tongues of faithlessness. You see, there are people... They create their own problems. You see, there are people, they make their own problems permanent. There are people that they even dig up some problems that were not there before, and they kill themselves with their tongue. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life. You see, there are people that pronounce death on themselves. And they say they cannot live. And they say their problem is too serious. Why don't you switch on to the other side of life? Because where there's faith, there's life. And it's going to be resurrection power coming in your life today in Jesus' name. Life is in the power of the tongue. Why don't you make use of that? Death is also in the power of the tongue. Why don't you abandon that? And it says, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 23. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. See, you can, you can be the author of life, of abundance, of blessing, of miracle in your life. If you keep your tongue from saying something negative, 
If you keep your tongue from saying something destructive, if you keep your tongue from saying something you know, that will make a sickness to persist in your life, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. I'm looking at uh, chapter 10 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not seen. But he that refraineth his leaves is wise. He that refraineth his leaves is wise. You refrain your leaves from saying what the people are saying. Ah, that's a serious matter. That's a serious sickness. That's a terrible thing. That happened to you. You're carrying that in your body. And the sin is deadly. You refrain your tongue. And if you refrain your tongue, that sin will not have any power in you this morning in Jesus' name. I'm looking at chapter 12 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12. We're looking at verse 19. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 19. The leap of truth shall be established forever. The leap of truth shall be established forever. You see what you say with your, with your mouth. If it falls in line with the truth of the word of God. If you don't contradict the word of God. You say this is the truth. The promise of God. That's the truth. The declaration of the power of God. That's the truth. And what the Lord has said is going to do. And it's going to do for me. Going to do for us this morning. That's the truth. And if you keep that in your lip, it's going to be established today and forever in Jesus' name. Chapter 15 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. The knowledge of the scriptures we have, you see it aright. The knowledge of the promises of God we have, use that aright. And the knowledge of the very fact that we know that Jesus can do all things. And Jesus is able to do this in your life this morning as you connect with him. Use that knowledge aright. And then it goes, it goes on to say in verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord are going about right now. And as you believe, he knows you there. He's spotting you out. And your problems are going to be solved today. I said your problems are going to be solved today. Look at verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Not somebody who gives only half of his tongue to saying good and to declaring the promise of God. He gives the whole tongue. 100% to saying what is according to the word of God, according to the word of life, according to the promise of God. And it's saying here that you are going to be the tree of life. Tree of life. I said tree of life. Chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 4. Proverbs chapter 17, we're looking at verse 4. It says, in verse 4, a wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to haughty tongue. And then in verse 20, look at verse 20 here, that same chapter 17, verse 20, it tells us, He that has a forward heart findeth no good. Because you see, the heart is connected with the tongue. And from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And he that has a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. If you don't want to fall into mischief, keep your tongue from evil. Heaven will keep you from trouble. God will keep you from trouble. The power of the Spirit of God will keep you from trouble. Chapter 26 of Proverbs. Chapter 26 of Proverbs. I'm reading the last verse there, which is verse 28. It says, A light tongue hated those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth walketh ruin. You will not walk your own ruin. I say you will not destroy yourself. You have to turn that tongue around. Are you going to see that things are going to turn around in your life in Jesus' name? Chapter 31, Proverbs 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom. When you come to pray, you open your mouth with wisdom. After the prayer, somebody is asking you, anything happened? 
the new Gethany miracle, you open your mouth with wisdom as you're going around during the day. And you know the prayer you prayed in the morning. And we know everything we pray for in the name of Jesus will be granted unto us. During the day, as you are discussing with people, you open your mouth with, tell me, wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Let me show you something about the children of Israel in the wilderness. This is the revelation concerning the children of Israel. And it concerns us today because all things that are reaching, whatsoever things were reaching, a full time, were reaching for our learning, that we through the patience of scripture and through patience may have comfort in the scriptures. You see those people, their tongue was not speaking right. Look at, look at what I'm saying. Uh, we're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Uh, I read from verse 31. Exodus chapter 14, uh, verse 31. It says, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, the people, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. We call that a miracle. It's a miracle of passing through the Red Sea that you find in chapter 14. Can I show you something in chapter 15? Chapter 15, we're looking at verse 24. Chapter 15, verse 24. If you are there, say it aloud. One, two, three, go. And the people murmured against Moses saying, What shall we dream? A miracle in chapter 14, the very next chapter, memory. You see, that's what created the wilderness for them. They couldn't stay steady and they couldn't stand firm. A miracle happened in chapter 14 and the very next uh, chapter, murmuring and murmuring and murmuring. I'm going to look at chapter 16. I'm looking at chapter 16 uh, and in verse, uh, we're looking at uh, verse 15. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. It is manna. Provision of food. Provision is coming to you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at uh, verse 31. Verse 31 of that same chapter. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed white. And the taste of it was like wavers made with honey. That's uh, chapter 16. Uh, and we have manna. Look at chapter 17. The very next chapter. The very next chapter in verse 3. Chapter 17 verse 3. And the children of his and the people thirsted there for water. Then the people murmured against Moses. Look at it in chapter 16, manna. And then the very next, next chapter, murmuring. This is the problem of people. That this moment now, there's a watch of faith. This moment now, there's a declaration of faith. This time now, there is the acceptance of faith. And the very next moment, and the very next day, and the very next chapter, it is murmuring. Uh, look at uh, chapter 31. Chapter 31. I'm looking at you from verse 1. The children of Israel, they created a wilderness for themselves. A wilderness for themselves. Apart from the wilderness they were passing through. Their tongue. Their tongue. Their declaration. And their confession. And the things they were saying. One chapter, miracle. And the very next chapter, misery. We're looking at chapter 31. I read it from verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bazaliel, the son of Orai, Orai, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, clever works, great works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in, carry, in carrying a in carving of a timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And behold, I have given him a holier, the son of a Hishamak. 
And it says of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, have I put wisdom, have I put wisdom, have I put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded. There, there you find a blessing. Blessing, blessing. Look at the very next, next chapter now. The next chapter from verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, uh, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, well, what not we know not what is become of him backsliding you see that was the problem of the children of israel one chapter here miracle one chapter here blessing one chapter here a pouring of blessing and the very next chapter you find backsliding is because of that they went through a lot of problems in their lives but we are going to stop that gap that crack in your world of faith, in your world of godliness, the Lord is going to mend it today in Jesus' name. I thought I'll hear better, better. Amen. I, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at Numbers chapter eleven. Numbers chapter eleven. I'm reading from verse twenty-three. Numbers chapter eleven. And we're looking at verse twenty-three. In verse twenty-three, it says, "And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short?" Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. A miracle was going to happen like a miracle is going to happen to you right now. What miracle, what miracle? Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it tells us, And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp. It as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on that on the other side, round about the camp. And as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered quails, he that gathered leaves, gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves, lounge about. And then he goes on to say that it was round about the camp. You see, that was a great supply. A great supply, supernatural supply. That's chapter 11. Look at chapter 12. Chapter 12, and Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman, and he said, As the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, as he not spoken also by us, and the Lord heard it. And eventually, you know what happened? We're told in verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam. Behold, she was leprous. And then we're told in verse 15. And Miriam was shut out from the camp. Seven days. And the people journeyed not and the people journeyed not, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. You see, in chapter 11, there was a supernatural supply. And then in chapter 12, the very next chapter, there was slander and sinfulness manifested. That's the reason why they never came out well. Because a miracle will happen, then memory will happen, a blessing will come, then backsliding will come, and then there will be supply, and then there will be slander. The very next chapter, we're looking at chapter 14. In Numbers chapter 14, I'm reading here from verse 6. Numbers chapter 14, we're looking at verse 6. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it 
It's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, thank God he delights in us. Are you there? I said he delights in you. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. They are bread for us. They are bread for us. Their defense has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Is the Lord with you there? What are you? The Lord is there with you. The healer is there with you. The provider is there with you. Your blessing is sure. Fear them not. Fear them not. Fear them not. That's chapter 14. That's chapter 14. But look at verse 11 of that same chapter. Chapter 11 of that same chapter. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? How long will it be? Ere yeah, they believe me for all the, all the signs which I have showed them. For all the signs which I have showed them. Look at verse 22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, these ten times, these ten times, and I have not hacking to my voice surely they shall not see the lamb it goes on like that telling us on the one hand that same chapter the first part of the chapter does abundant provision abundant provision and before you end the chapter there's avoidable provocation provocation they could have avoided that they could have thought of all that god had done and they could have said, because God had done this, he had done this, he had done that. He is able to do everything he has promised. And this morning I come to assure you, he's able. I said he's able. I said he's able. And he's going to do it, he's going to perform it in your life, in Jesus' name. But to see the problem of the children of Israel, on the one hand, there's provision. And then the very next moment, God is saying, there's provocation. They provoke him. It will not happen like that in your life. I'm coming to chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Numbers chapter 20. We're looking at verses 7 and 8. It tells us in verse 7, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother. And speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth water. Three million people waiting to drink water, and there was no water. And then there was a rock, and the Lord gave the word unto Moses. Like he's giving us the word today. Out of that rock in front of you, water will come out. Miracle water will come out. Abundance will come out for everybody in Jesus' name. And eventually they drank miracle water. But look at verse, look at chapter 21, the very next chapter. In chapter 20, miracle, water coming out, out of the rock. But now look at the very next chapter. In verse, in chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to come past the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people speak against God. How can? How can? The previous chapter, look at water coming out of the road. And look at everybody rejoicing. Look at testimony time. I drank water. I'm refreshed. And this is a miracle. We've never seen anything like this in our lives. In the very next chapter, chapter 21, verse 5, And the people speak against God and against Moses, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of the land, out of Egypt, to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there water. And our soul loathed this like bread. And the Lord sent very serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. See the problem because 
they will not continue you see their tongue arise that's what the lord is telling us a miracle is coming your way today that's what the lord is telling us a wonder is coming upon your life today but immediately after that wonder don't slide back don't slide back don't go back to what you used to say and the way you used to talk and the actually you used to manifest let faith have residence in your life let faith take abiding place in your life you are not going to go back to what you used to say and where you used to go things are going to be different in jesus name did i hear an amen from god's people Chapter 24, Numbers chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 7. Numbers chapter 24, I'm reading here from verse 7. It says, he shall pour water out of his bucket. That's talking about God. Here is Balaam prophesying, talking about what God will do for the children of Israel. He shall pour the water out of the buckets, and his sea shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag. And your king shall be higher than eager. And his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought, forth, brought him forth out of Egypt. He has as it were the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies. And shall break their bows and pierce them through with the arrows. And then he goes on to say he couched. He lay down as a lion and as a great lion who shall stir him up blessed is he that blesses thee and cursed is he that causes thee that's the blessing of god upon the children of israel look at verse 19 in verse 19 it says out of jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and he shall destroy him that remaineth of the city is telling us that here is the prophecy the prophecy of dominion of abundance of provision of miracle for everyone in the land of israel chapter 24 look at the next chapter chapter 25 and israel abode in him and the people began to commit water adultery immorality of the daughters of Moab. And he called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the Lord did eat, and, and, and the people did eat, and the people did eat, and the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto be a peer. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. You see the point I'm making? Why they went through that wilderness and it was up and down, up and down, up and down. And they got and they lost and they were blessed and then they backslid. And good things happened to them and bad things didn't happen next because they were not stable. Their tongues were not steady and their tongues were not focused on saying only what is right according to the promise of the Lord. They brought death upon themselves and they created unnecessary problems, avoidable problems for themselves. It shall not be so among you. I said it shall not be so among you. But you're going to have the wonder of the faith, of the tongue of faith in Jesus' name. And this, and this day, mountains will move away. I said mountains will move away. And all those problems are going to melt away and vanish away in your life in Jesus' name. And you'll maintain, you'll maintain, you'll maintain the tongue of power, the tongue of authority. We're looking at a point number three now, which is the weapon of unconquerable tongues on the field. The weapon of unconquerable tongues on the field you have the weapon in your mouth you have the weapon on your tongue and everything you say the lord will fulfill today in jesus name if you say amen you confirm your miracle Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verses 19 and 20. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Incredible disease. Why could not we cast that out? Terrible stubborn demon. Why couldn't we cast that out? 
And this long-standing problem, why couldn't we solve the problem? Why could we not cast him out? Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Clear unbelief away today, a miracle will flow into your life. Healing will flow into your life. The anointing that breaks the yoke will flow into your life in Jesus' name. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a mountain, if ye have faith, I'm asking you as a mountain, if ye have faith as a bag of rice, if ye have faith as heavy as a bag of cement, as what? Can't you talk? As what? Can't you shout? As what? As a grain of mustard seed. You know, sometimes a grain of a sand may fall, may be inside your pocket. You can't even feel it. It's, it doesn't have any weight because it does a grain. And Jesus is saying, if your faith, if it's real faith, faith in the Almighty God, faith in great possibilities that God can do. If you have faith in the Almighty God as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain. It doesn't say you'll pray about the mountain. You will describe the mountain. You will kneel before the mountain. You'll throw up your hands in despair before the mountain. You'll fast because of the mountain. And you will run to somebody because of the mountain. If you will say unto this mountain, you're going to talk to your mountain today. That mountain must move. I said that mountain must move. If you are ever angry at all in your life, you'll be angry against this mountain in your life. And you're not coming, you're not petting the mountain, and you're not pampering the mountain, you're not pleading with the mountain, you're looking at the mountain, it may be in your body, it may be in your soul, it may be in your spirit, an impossibility there for the past of for the past of men. But you are looking at the mountain today, and you're saying today is the last day date for this mountain in my life. This is the last time I'm not carrying this mountain back home. I'm not going to face this mountain this coming year. This thing will move. I said this thing will move. Thank God infirmity will move away from your life. Disease will move away from your life. The powers of darkness will move away from your life. It says, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, I will say, I will say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Somebody there, and it shall remove. And it shall remove. And nothing. And nothing, I didn't hear you, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's the weapon we have this morning, you know, and we're going to apply that weapon. It is going to work. Prayer will work in your life. Faith will work in your life. Power will work in your life. Today is different from any other day in your life. You're going to receive in Jesus' name. Chapter 18, chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 18. Chapter 18, reading from verse 18. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. All you need to say is, The sickness you are bound, and I cast you out of my life. Heaven will confirm me this morning in Jesus' name. Because whatsoever, whatsoever, spirit of infirmity and spirit of disease and spirit of sickness and spirit of poverty and spirit of discouragement and spirit of suicide, whatsoever ye shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It will happen. I said it will happen. Why will that happen? Why is it that whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven? And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 16. Verse 19. 
and I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody has a key over there. I said somebody has a key over there. You will open doors of blessing in your life and those doors will open. I said you will open doors and doors will open in Jesus name. Look up, look up for a moment here. If you have the key in your hand, it doesn't matter how short you are, how tall you are, how big you are, how mighty you are, how knowledgeable you are, how educated you are. It is not the knowledge that opens that door. It's the key. And you have the key in your hand. And the key is the name of Jesus. Anything you ask in the name of Jesus today, praise the Lord, your answer has come. I said, praise the Lord, your answer has come. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Shall be loosed in heaven. I'm looking at somebody that is going to get a miracle here today. The power of God is going to come upon your life today. And every negative thing that followed you until this time, thank God, they're destroyed. I say, thank God, they're destroyed. I'm looking, I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, and I'm reading from verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against your wife shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against your husband shall prosper. And no weapon that is fashioned against your child shall prosper. It says, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the, of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Victory today for you, says the Lord. Deliverance for you today, says the Lord. Mighty breakthrough for you today, says the Lord. Answer to prayer for you today, says the Lord. Chapter 16, verse 1, chapter 16, verse 1. Arise and shine. Your darkness is gone. I said your darkness is gone. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It will happen in Jesus' name. Verse 19, the sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither the, for the brightness shall the most shine uh, unto thee. For the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory, thy sun shall no more go down. Your prosperity will no more go down. Your joy will no more go down. Your victory will no more go down. Your blessing will no more go down. Neither shall the moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning shall be ended. The days of your crying shall be ended. The days of sorrow shall be ended. The people shall also be righteous. I said that people shall also be righteous. The Bible says that people also shall all be righteous. And they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one, a little one, a little one shall become a thousand. Multiplication coming in your life. Power working in your life. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten each in his time. I, the Lord, will hasten each in his time. When is your time? I said, when is your time? Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 13. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Yea, before the day was, was I am he. 
and there is none that can deliver out of my hand, I will work and who shall let it. I will work. He will work in your life. He will work in your family. He will work in your brain. He will work on your body. He will work in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart. I will work and who shall let it. Remember ye not, therefore, the former things, neither consider the things so full. Behold, I will do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert. Well, your time has come. I said your time has come. What are you? Why don't you rise up and claim it? And remember, everything you say will be fulfilled. Everything you say will be fulfilled. Blessings are coming. Miracles are coming. Healing is coming. And it is just today. It is just today. Don't keep quiet. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. And speak to that mountain. And that mountain has to move away from your life. Because today, you are going to have what you say. Today, you are going to have what you say. It's a weapon. The weapon of the tongue that has faith in God. That has faith in God. Say it, say it, say it. And receive it. It's coming upon you today. Coming upon your life today. Healing. Deliverance. Dominion. Power. Authority. Answer to prayer. It's coming. Incredible diseases will vanish away. Infirmities will vanish away. The Lord will do great, irreversible miracles in your life. Permanent miracle coming upon your life. It's happening right there. Happening right there. Happening right there. Happening right there. Say to this mountain. Don't allow that mountain to remain. Don't allow that infirmity to remain. Don't allow that sickness to remain. Say to this mountain, be the removed. And it's gone. And it's gone. And it's gone. Change your language. Don't talk negative. Don't talk unbelief. Don't talk despair. Don't talk discouragement. Don't give in. Don't give in to the devil. Don't give in to the enemy. Don't give in to somebody that wants to destroy your destiny. You have the final say. The word is your mouth. Bring it out. What of power. What of authority. Bring it out. Don't allow that mountain to remain. Bring out the word of power. It will be done. It will be done. It will be done. You bind it on earth, it's bound in heaven. You declare it now, it becomes a decree. It's done, it's done, it's done. The miracle is in your mouth. The healing is in your mouth. The victory is in your mouth. The authority is in your mouth. This is your time to take what heaven has provided for you. Don't cringe. Don't bow to the devil. Don't give up. Don't give up. And don't give me to the desires of the enemy. You have the victory right there. Don't look at the size of the problem. Don't look at the shape of the problem. Don't look at scientific uh, investigation on the problem. Say it what you want. And it's done. And after this moment, don't talk about the mountain anymore. Watch your tongue. Watch your lips. Watch your utterance. Watch what you say. Don't bend. Don't back up. Don't give up. You say mountain move. You affirm. You confirm. You declare. It's gone. It has no choice. It must go. Resist the devil. 
and it will flee from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Confirm your miracle with an amen. Raise up that hand. You are the possessor of miracle this morning. And you are the possessor of healing this morning. Nothing will be possible for you in Christ. For you in God. And for God manifesting his life in you. Thank God your victory has come. Lay one hand where the problem is and raise up the other hand. Father in Jesus name. I thank you Lord for this glorious money. A morning of breakthrough. A morning of blessing. A morning of the supernatural. A morning of miracle for everyone here present. Everyone that hears your word right now. Oh Lord, I pray, confirm the miracle in every life in Jesus' name. I speak to the mountain in your life. Mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Sickness, disease, infirmity, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, everything your people have mentioned to you one by one, let there be a confirmation. Let them receive their miracle. Let heaven pour down abundance upon every life in Jesus' name. And the name of the person you mentioned in prayer, Asking that healing will go to that person. Deliverance will go to that person. Miracle will go to that person. Be it confirmed now in Jesus' name. Every mountain you presented before the Lord. And you opened your mouth and you said, go. Lord, I pray. It will go right now in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Possess your miracle. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are delivered in Jesus' name. And the people of God, right now, one by one, possess your possession. To my right over there, my left over there, my in the middle, at the back, anywhere you are now, anywhere you are now, possess your possession in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you reverse every negative thing in every life. Testimony. 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 And joy to fill every mouth. I thank you because I know it is now. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have received, say a good amen. Be it permanent in every life in Jesus' name. 